I was so excited when I heard that chat now connects directly with Canva. After all, I love Canva, I love AI, so the potential for the two to work so seamlessly together is potentially game changing. But when I tried it out for myself, I discovered that there is a big problem with it. So first, let me show you exactly how this integration works because there are actually two different ways to connect ChatGPT with Canva and they do two completely different things. I'll show you the new one first because that's the one that's gotten everyone really excited. So when you log into ChatGPT now, if you are on the paid plan, you'll notice that when you click on tools and run deep research, and then you click on sources, you will now have the option to select and connect with Canva. Now, like I said, this is only available on the paid plan, unfortunately, but even if you have a free plan, stick around because you might think it's worth it to actually upgrade for this feature. So let me show you how this connection works. I'll click on Canva, and this will actually connect with my actual Canva account. I'll click continue to Canva, and then you'll land on this page where it's asking if you wanna connect up the two services. So I'm gonna approve this and just click allow. So now back on ChatGPT, I'll just close this out and now I'm ready to use this. So I'll just open up a new chat. I have one open here already. And I'm going to again, click on tools, run deep research, and under sources, I will select Canva. So now what this will allow you to do is have ChatGPT actually scan through your Canva account and look at any of your projects and give you feedback on them and tell you what's going on with them. So for instance, I have this social media calendar right here. And basically this is a mock-up of what a social media calendar might look like for a small business. So in this case, it's a coffee shop. And you see right here, we have the whole schedule when all the social media posts are gonna be posted, where it's gonna be posted, like Instagram or YouTube, the different content type, and the actual visuals and copy that we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask ChatGPT to actually look for this document and tell us what we need to work on next, because there are some things in here that are scheduled for soon, but we haven't even started yet. You see these ones say not started, and this is due in like two days. So I'm wondering if ChatGPT will be able to pick up on that and tell us that, hey, we need to get started on those social media posts. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, look at my social media calendar on Canva and tell me what are the top priorities that I need to work on today. And very frequently, it will ask you a follow-up question. It usually doesn't answer it right away. So in this case, I'm going to clarify because it's saying, hey, what specific goals are you working on? So I'm just gonna say, I just wanna make sure that I complete all the social media posts on time so that they actually get posted when they are scheduled to be posted. And then I'll click on submit for that. All right, so here are the results. It says, these should be my top priorities today. I should first finish today's scheduled post for July 10th, so that's right. And it says, it goes into more detail saying the calendar shows a post slated for today and the details are not fully complete, it says. So I do wanna make sure I do all that. It gives me some action steps like finish writing the caption, adding it to the, to the date or up top. Uh, what's it saying? Add sale end date or details after up to. So that's right as well. And it says just create and finalize the company image and video for that design. So that's good. It also says to publish or schedule today's post on time so that that's all done. Then the third thing it has me to do is to address upcoming post deadlines, if any. So a little bit generic, it says review the social media calendar for any posts after today that are already scheduled and might require action today. You know, it's a little bit generic. I was, I was hoping that it would tell me to hey, you know, you have something coming up tomorrow that's in progress, you're gonna have to complete that. So it didn't tell me to do that, which is a little bit disappointing, but it did give me at least some sort of guideline as to what priorities I should do today. So let's do another one. This is one that I frequently need help with. These are some thumbnails I made for a video that I recently posted on YouTube. And you see I have four different designs here. They're all very similar, but a little bit different. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to look at all of them and give me its advice on which one I should actually use and which one is the best. So I'm just gonna copy down the title of this design and I'll come over to ChatGPT and I'm going to click on new chat and we'll do the same thing. Tools, run deep research, and Canva is already selected. So I'll just say to it, take a look at these thumbnails for a video I'm about to post on YouTube and let me know which one you think will perform the best. And then I'll also say, 
name of the project is, and there it is. So let's see what follow-up questions it's going to ask me. It says, can you please upload the thumbnails you're considering? No, I'll say the thumbnails, let's do this. The thumbnails are on Canva and the name of the project is, and I'll paste in the name again. So it's getting a little bit confused as to what I'm asking it, but now it seems to understand and it's going to start evaluating. All right, so here's ChatGPT's feedback. Let's take a look at it. So it says there are four thumbnails. Each thumbnail is analyzed, focusing on color and contrast. So it goes through each thumbnail. It says thumbnail number one and gives me feedback on it. It gives me thumbnail number two and gives me feedback on it. I kind of just want to see the results. This is a lot of information that it's giving me. There is number four in there as well. Best performing thumbnail is the last one. And it tells me exactly why. It says emotional engagement, clarity and focus, color and contrast, text and communication. So it, it did a great job. That's the one that I actually ended up picking was this fourth one. So I do agree with it that that is the best one. And it tells me exactly how it came to that conclusion. Now, like I said, ChatGPT and Canva actually have two different ways that they connect up with each other. So let me show you the other one that's been around for a while. So over here on ChatGPT, this is available on the free plan as well. You wanna click where it says GPTs right here. And when you open this up, these are like specialized ChatGPTs. So you can have one in here that helps you as a writing assistant. There's one that can help you with research if you're like in school, one that will help you with PDFs, but the one you're looking for is Canva. So you can just search in here for Canva and you're going to see a lot of different results come up. You want the one that's actually made by canva.com. That's this one right here. You see it says by canva.com and go ahead and click on that. Once you start using it, you'll notice that it now appears on the left here so you can easily access it. So I'm gonna click on that. And what this does is it actually creates designs for you and you don't need to link up your Canva account like you had to do with the other tool. So for instance, they give you some prompts right here. We're just gonna use one of these. So I'll say, how about an inspirational quote graphic for social media? So now it's asked me some follow-up questions like what you want the design to convey. So I want the design to be empowering and then I'll click on submit. So it's always going to give you two designs. We have one available already. So I'll go ahead and click on that one. So when you click on it, it's actually gonna open up canva.com with the design in here. Obviously you wanna be logged in so you can actually make edits to it. So this is what it made. It says rise up with this nice sunset, I guess, or sunrise. And it says embrace your strength and unlock your potential today. So not bad. I don't think it's too great, but it's okay. And here's the other one. We can again click on this and that will open it up over here. So maybe I should have been more specific. I don't like love these, but it did actually, you know, it, it's created something, right? It created something that is usable. So let's try something else. So this time I asked it to create a presentation for a proposal to open a coffee shop in downtown Denver. The coffee shop is called The Daily Grind. So I'll click on submit for that. And one thing to note is that with this tool, it can't pull information from Canva. So it's not able to look at your other designs or know what your branding is like. So you have to give it all the information that you want in order to actually get the exact results that you want. So let's give it a minute to actually do this and see what the results look like. All right, so option one is ready. Let's go ahead and open up the link and see what it looks like. So this is the presentation. It says the daily grind, elevating the coffee experience in downtown Denver. And we can look at each of the slides right here. I think this one is okay, right? It says under 10, understanding our target market in down in Denver, prime location, competitive analysis, you know, everything you would kind of want in one of these presentations. Here's some stats and facts, some graphs. So pretty good. It's a really good start uh, for any sort of presentation that you need. Here's the other one. So let's go ahead and open up that one. Yeah, same kind of thing. I think I like the first one a little bit better, but this one has a lot more graphs, which is, which is pretty nice. So it really depends on the exact kind of style that you want. So this all seems great, right? Well, the truth is everything I've shown you so far has been edited. Anytime I ask ChatGPT a question about something in my Canva account, it takes some time to get a response. In fact, it takes a lot of time. The first example I showed you took a whopping 28 minutes to get an answer from ChatGPT. 
I was trying to record the entire thing, actually gave up, left, made myself a sandwich, ate that sandwich, came back, and it still wasn't finished. I thought maybe it was a fluke, but the next one took over 12 minutes to get a response. And there's another problem. Anytime you use this tool, it uses something on ChatGPT called deep research. And every ChatGPT account only gets 25 deep research credits every single month. That's it. So you're going to quickly blow through them using this for something that's going to take way longer than it really should. So my question is, why would you use this feature at all when there's something that's much faster and a lot easier to use? So check this out, ready? Let's say we wanted feedback on this spreadsheet and wanted to know what we should do next. If you're on a MacBook, you wanna press Control Shift Command 3. And I know that's a lot to remember, but Control Shift Command 3 will give you the option to select an area of your screen, take a screenshot of it, and it saves it to your clipboard. This really speeds things up so you don't have to download a screenshot to your computer first and then upload it. Now, if you're on a Windows device, you wanna hit Windows Shift S to do the same thing. So I did com Control Shift Command 3. I just highlighted the area that I want and I copied it. Now, returning back to ChatGPT, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna paste that in. So now that screenshot is pasted and I'll send it the exact same prompt. Look at my social media calendar. I'll just eliminate where it says on Canva and tell me what are the top priorities that I need to work on today. And here you can see it gave me the exact priorities. This took about 10 seconds, I would say. So first it says finalize your YouTube overlay ad for July 11th, which for me is tomorrow. And then it says begin work on the two ad schedule for July 13th, which is accurate. And I actually think this is more accurate than the other tool. It really gave me the right priorities to be working on today. Now, if you don't have ChatGPT or don't wanna use it, you can actually do all of this directly inside of Canva. So returning back to the Canva homepage, if you click right here, we have Canva AI, and this is their chatbot. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a screenshot of, let's say this one, with all my different thumbnails. So I took a screenshot of that before. I'll click on Add Media, and here it is right here. And I'll click on Use Image, and I'll just ask it, look at these thumbnails and give me your feedback on them. Tell me which one you think would perform the best on YouTube and then click on submit. All right, so within, I would say about 12 to 15 seconds, here are the results that it gave me. So it says my top thumbnail strengths. It gives me the strengths. It gives me suggestions on all of them and which one will perform the best. It thinks the one on the bottom will perform the best which is this one right here, which is actually the one that I went with. Now, one downside about this is that you can't paste in images. And also, even though when you click here and click on add media and click on designs, like I have my design in here, like these are my thumbnails right here, but it doesn't work that way. If I click on this and ask it to evaluate it, it won't actually be able to see the images. I hope Canva fixes that because that's kind of a big pain. But for now, if you want to use this, you just have to take a screenshot, download it to your computer, and then upload it. I know it's a little annoying. Hopefully Canva fixes it. What about the second tool I showed you though? This Canva GPT, as they call it. That one worked pretty good, right? The only problem with it is, is that it just doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're going to have AI build you something, you might as well do it directly inside of Canva because it's a lot faster and a lot more seamless. Again, coming here to canva.com and clicking on Canva AI, I can ask it to make anything I want it to. So in this case, I'll give the exact same prompt asking it to create a presentation for a coffee shop in downtown Denver. And unlike ChatGPT, which just gives us two options, Canva AI gives us four that we can choose from. So let's say we like this one right here. The other thing I like is that you can change any of it directly inside of this. So I can click on this. Let's say I don't like this image. I can just click on it and actually search for a different image or use one of these other images that it suggests. You can see that it automatically suggests the AI other images that you can use or even other text you can put in here as well. You can definitely change the text. And then if you really wanna get fine tuned with any of this, of course you can click up here where it says use Canva editor, actually open it up and make any of the changes using all the other Canva tools that you already have available to you. In summary, when you want AI to actually design something for you, you're better off just using Canva AI. It's seamless, it's built into Canva, and generally you're gonna get faster and better results. 
However, if you want intelligent feedback on your designs, then that's when it makes sense to use a chatbot. But don't use the integration because it is just way too slow. Just take some screenshots, send it in ChatGPT, or even send them to Canva AI. In fact, Canva AI has been doing a lot of amazing things recently. I made an entire video about it that you can check out right here. Some of the features of it are completely mind blowing and it's really changing the way I use Canva. So if you wanna see exactly what these amazing features are that I've been using and loving, make sure to click on this video and I'll see you over there in just one second. Bye for now.